hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Well, it is 1.42 a.m. and I am A, in an excellent mood, and B, very, very awake. <laughs> and I have my uh, two tumblers full of water right here. I think Frank gave us these. They have the cactuses on them from Arizona. And then behind me, I have my Colorado cup. I mean, those Starbucks cups have really been coming in hand handy lately. The, all the ones I've been sent and the ones I've been buying because I've been using them for um, buying coffee and then, um, you know, like I'll wash a couple of them and then use another ones. And then I've been using them for water too, which has been great. Like one around the house and one to take with me. And so they've been so useful for that. Um, and then I just keep a gallon jug of water in the refrigerator at all times. So then I just pour it into these, which makes it so easy. So after these, I will have drank a gallon of water today. I'm like feeling like the water is definitely, I think, helping. Um, but people say it clears up your skin. I don't know that it clears up my skin. My skin isn't really that. I don't get acne really. And um, it's not that blotchy anyway. So, um, people keep on telling me, they're like, you look so tan. I feel like I've lost my tan, but Tanya and I were talking about how, uh, Tanya Jean, we were talking about how we uh, look a little bit better when we're a little sun-kissed and tanned. So, I'll take the lingering tan as long as possible. Go to Florida in March. I'm ready to go on vacation again right now. I could just... hop on a plan. I don't really want to talk about this right now, but I feel like like Alex and I are fluctuating between like these great stages of sadness because of PP and it's just, you know, I think we're just getting used to our world without him. And um, you know, I kind of had a moment today where I had a little bit of a breakdown and then Alex walked in tonight and he really had a hard time tonight when he came in the door. And um I think I just want to let go <laughs> and go on trips and travel, you know, and um, but can't travel all the time. And of course, you know, we're trying to be the best, the, the, the best, the best dads possible to Boo and Tucker. They're getting, like, they're getting so much attention. I don't know that they even have any clue what it's about. <laughs> but we're literally with them, like, almost 24 hours a day. And we were talking the other night about they haven't slept um, in their house. Was I talking about this on here or was I talking about this with Tanya? Because like, Alex and I talked about it and I was saying something about it. But they haven't slept in their house. Like, So we have this crate in the basement and it's like three feet by three feet or something. It's a big crate. They haven't, oh, it's probably bigger than that. They haven't slept in their crate since um, we've gotten back from Mexico. And, you know, a couple nights during the week when Alex had to get up really, really early, um, they would sleep in their house because then they wouldn't bark when I came in at night so it wouldn't wake him up. So his sleep wouldn't be like, you know, interrupted. They're not really barking too bad right now. Um, I, he said, yeah, I was thinking the other day that we could even leave them out while we're gone. Cause when we leave, we put them in their house, we crate them. And I was like, I know we can't do that. Cause like PP was always out. Like he was never crated. And I said, we can't do that. And it's because I think with Boo Radley, we could like Boo Radley would probably just go down to his house anyway and just sit in there with the door open, you know? But Tucker gets on top of the table in the living room and he gets my Sharpie markers and he gets into things. He ruined a memory card of mine and um, it's just easier that way. And they like being in there. Like we go, okay guys, go to your house. And they like immediately run downstairs. They like it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, we've had a couple moments of sadness, I think, today and yesterday, and it's hard. It's, like, getting used to it, and, you know, I was thinking to myself, like, it hasn't even been a month yet, and 
of course I'm going to feel that. And it kind of hits me out of nowhere. Um, but anyway, other than that moment that I had today, I have had a fantastic day today. It is so hot in this car. And let me tell you why I'm in an excellent mood. I'm in an excellent mood because I have a half an hour left of my Denise Mina book, which is called Conviction, which I've talked about several times on here. Um, and then I'm going to start the Celestine Prophecy. So for January, well, it was December, but I moved it to January because I just didn't have time to get those books done. On my Peterisms channel, I'm reading... Um, I'm reading, uh, what do you call it? A self-help book every day. Or every, every day. God, that, I'd be the most helped person in the world. Um, every month, I'm reading a self-help book over there. And I'm trying to make them rather short. I started it in November with the Four Agreements. And then December was the Celestine Prophecy. And then the extra credit book, that I called it that, was The Secret. But um, I didn't finish, I didn't, I started The Secret and I didn't even start The Celestine Prophecy. So, as soon as I finish Conviction tonight, I'm gonna start listening to The Celestine Prophecy, which I'm excited to listen to an audiobook because I read it originally, the hardback, which I have in the basement still. And then there's a follow-up, there's two follow-up books, I think, called like The 10th Insight and then something else. But anyway, I don't know, I may read this. I've already picked February's book and February's book is really, really short and the audiobook for it, which I bought because it was on sale, um, it is literally like an hour and 45 minutes. But I think it's kind of a good book for um, like graduation presents and stuff. So um, I wanna read that because I've, I haven't, I'm not gonna say what it is. I'm gonna put it in my video tomorrow, my Peterisms video tomorrow and then I'll talk about it on here. Um, so I'm excited to, I'm really like, I have been buying audiobooks lately. I need to stay off of Audible. I have been buying too many Audible books lately. You know, I was just thinking, like, because I bought this book, and it's called, like, oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a new young adult trilogy that just came out, and it's about these kids that go to this boarding school or something, and it's a mystery, but it's kind of like Clue, the, the board game Clue, and I was just thinking to myself, truly devious, um, I wonder when the third part of that book is coming out. I loved the first two books of that. The Truly De Devious Trilogy, if you haven't read it, it's fantastic. Um, but I'm just really in the mood to like drive around and just listen to audiobooks. Alex went to dinner with a friend of his tonight. He didn't stay out late at all. He came home early. He was only gone for like two hours. Um, and they went to, they went to some Thai restaurant. I literally honked at this guy to go and he's still just sitting there. Um, they went to some Thai restaurant and they went to this just little beer bar afterwards on Massachusetts Avenue downtown, which is kind of like an artsy area. Um, I didn't really do a whole lot of anything. I started a TikTok today. <laughs> do you guys know what TikTok is? Okay, the reason I started it, well, I've been thinking about it for a while, but there's like three fake Peter Bond TikTok accounts out. And people message me all the time. I feel like I'm having problems with this camera tonight, like sitting where I wanted to sit. But people message me all the time and they're like, do you have a TikTok? And I'm like, I don't have a TikTok. And they're like, well, there's a TikTok of you. On, and they've taken videos of mine, like from Facebook and Instagram, and they've stolen those videos and they've uploaded them onto like a Peter Bond TikTok. So, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start my own TikTok. The thing is that I don't edit, you know? So, I don't, like, all these people doing these really high-quality TikToks, like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> I have no idea how I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to kind of figure it out and play around with it for a little bit. But I started that, and I had some fun posting. I posted like three videos over there. I had to find these videos. 
that I knew that I wanted to post. One was of Tanya Jean and I. It was a stupid Snapchat filter thing that we did. I mean, I know it's not really like, my videos aren't like really what people do on, on uh, TikTok, but I don't really care. <laughs> So I started the TikTok and um, yeah, I did that today and then I just kind of fell down the rabbit hole of watching TikToks. But like, here's the thing, like when I was watching them, all of them are like, like these, a bunch of teenagers and it's all these like TikTok, I, I didn't even understand like some of the, I mean, they're TikTok things about like, I don't know, they're just silliness and they're fine, they're whatever. I mean, if I was, you know, a teenager, I'd probably like them, but it, I'm not so I was completely bored and it kept on like showing me those like and so I was like texting like friends of mine and I was like how do you find like the TikTok people that you would like you know to watch and they're like well what do you want to watch and I'm like I don't know so I found this girl that does these Starbucks like recipes I like her and then I found this other one that's called like dorm food hacks, although it's not like a woman that's like in college and she's like older, but she does these recipes that are like food. I actually thought this would be great for Christina Randall or Jessica Kent to do like prison food like hacks or whatever, you know, because they've done a couple of those videos. I think Christina did the prison burrito and I think Jessica did prison cupcakes. I thought that would be interesting if they did like a TikTok of that, but anyway... People, um, I joked on the other day about on my channel about starting a cooking channel, um, like a sixth channel and starting a cooking channel. But I have to tell you, like so many people were like, oh my God, I would love for you to start a cooking channel because I literally know nothing about cooking. I don't cook. I have no idea how to cook. I don't know anything about cooking. And they were like, that would be so fantastic. So I have to tell you, I know people are like, you said you would never start a six channel. Well, <laughs> I'm taking it back. I'm kind of thinking about maybe down the road starting a cooking channel. <laughs> I don't know what I would call it. I don't know what it would be, but it would basically be me just cooking things that, because <laughs> I don't know anything about cooking. So it'd be me following a recipe, you know, and seeing how like messed up it was and stuff like that. I think that would be fun. I'm actually, I mean, I know people are like, oh my God, Peter, you're really going to start a six channel. I'm like seriously thinking about this. Is my camera out of focus right now? It is. Damnation. Come on. Um, I mean, not tomorrow. It would probably be the summer or something like that, but I'm thinking about it. So we'll see. That would literally be the channel that I never thought I was gonna start. I kind of just wanted to start a channel too. Like that's so funny that I just said just. But I kind of started wanted to start a channel just called like Peter, you know? And it would just be like videos of me every single day. Like I really wanted to do that. Like three or four minute videos of just like random stuff throughout the day. But then I was like, what's the point, you know? Like, um, I mean, I, don't, I guess I could put that on another channel, but like where would it fit? We have talked about this before. I just always am having like ideas and more ideas and more ideas of stuff that I would love to do. If it wasn't so impossible and nobody would follow it, I could literally have like 10 channels. I really could. Because I just like to create things. I like, you know, and the reality is that right now, like my booktube channel is struggling and, um, because at the end of the day, when I get my other videos done, it's the last video that I sit down to do typically. And so by that point, like Alex is either coming home or I'm tired and I'm just like, I can't film another video right now. And I really want to, but I can't. Like I've been wanting to do my best and my favorites and least favorites, uh, the best and worst of 2019 books. And I've started to sit down and like write it out and I haven't done it yet. Tomorrow I'm gonna do a book, a book uh, tube, up, a book club update. And then Sunday I can't, I won't have time because we have Carlitos' birthday party. So I don't even know that I'll be able to film videos on Sunday. So I don't know when 
I'm gonna get that done. But like going into February, I really wanna make a conscious effort of posting on booktube on a regular basis. I'm not gonna do like a schedule. Like, you know, remember back in the day, like a lot of, I mean, a lot of like YouTubers still have schedules, like their upload schedules Monday, Wednesday, and Friday or whatever. Like that doesn't work for me because the reality is I might wake up one day and be like, I mean, every day that I wake up, I always have videos that I wanna make and I always have ideas for videos. But some days I'm just dragging. Some days I have a migraine, you know? Some days I'm just like, I really, I cannot pull it together today. Um, and I need to just take care of myself and, you know, rest and relax. Um, and then other days I'm just like, boom, 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 boom. Like I'm feeling it and I post like, you know, two videos on my drama channel and like I post on all of my channels and I feel like real inspired that day. And that's always like, I mean, that's just kind of how I've worked creatively in my life always anyway. So, I mean, it doesn't, it's not strange to me that that's how YouTube is as well. Well, I don't want to get on a schedule with BookTube to help me have some structure to get back into posting on there regularly. Because then what happens is if a Wednesday comes up and I'm like really tired that day or I have a migraine and I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like filming a, a BookTube video today because I don't really have a whole lot to say, first of all. <coughs> I've kind of fallen underneath this thing. I don't know why. But anyway, if I would wake up that day and then I would like beat myself up for not filming a video. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do that. But I've kind of fallen into this thing where I think it was like this disservice that I did to myself the last two years where I was reviewing every book that I read. And so like in between my reviews, like back in the day on BookTube when I started, I was doing discussion videos and book blogs or book vlogs. I just drive around and talk and I was doing a lot of tag videos and just all kinds of stuff, right? A lot of book hauls. I was buying books left and right. I mean more books than I needed to buy. But the problem was over time what happened was that I, like if now, if I'm in between books, like if I was reading a book every two days, like I could do a review every two days. And I don't even, and here's the other thing, I don't even know that I want to do reviews. Like I haven't done any reviews for the books yet that I've read this year. I'm not really sure that I'm going to. People don't love, I mean, if you like the reviews, put it in the comment section below, I would be interested in knowing that. But typically people don't love reviews. Um, because either A, well, typically because they want to wait until after they've read the book. And so if they haven't read the book, they don't want to hear what you have to say in, in you know, um, a video. I mean, it's the same thing as like movie reviews and stuff, unless you give completely spoiler free movie reviews. There's this movie guy, I can't remember what his name is, but I follow him. He gets hundreds and thousands of views within hours. And he does like three or four minute reviews of movies. And they're just real basic. I mean, it's basically just like, yeah, I went and saw this movie, it was good. And, you know, Judy Smith was good in the movie and I gave it four stars. I mean, that's basically what it is. Um, but I enjoy his videos. But I have a hard time doing that when I do a review of a book. And as much as I like to tr try to keep it spoiler free, I just still kind of let spoilers out. Spoils out, spoilers out, <laughs> spoilers. So I don't know. And you know, I really felt like for the author, it was important that we did reviews as booktubers, which I don't know that I necessarily feel that way. My opinion's kind of changed about that. Um, like my first year of being on booktube, I really kind of fell into this whole idea of, well, what does it mean to be a booktuber? I kind of think a lot of people go through this on booktube. Like, cause you're watching everybody else's videos and you know, there's a lot of similar videos, similar type videos. And so it's like, well, if you're not doing, you know, if you're not doing tons of hauls and you know, your bookshelves don't look like Pinterest pictures and they're not color coded, and you haven't read every Cassandra Clare book that's out there, you know, then you're probably not gonna make it on BookTube. It's kind of how I felt, honestly, at first. And so I kind of found myself reading things that I wouldn't typically read because they were the popular things that were on BookTube, okay? Now, that actually turned out to be a really good thing because I found a lot of authors that I really, really enjoyed reading. 
that I would never have read had it not been for that. Like Marissa Meyer, the uh, the Lunar Chron Chronicles. I haven't finished that yet, but I want. I have. I think I have all of them on Audible. But I read Cinder and I loved it. I would never in a million years have picked up Cinder. Um, you know, like I wouldn't. I don't think I would read Young Adult the way that I enjoy it today. The Hate You Give, uh, Dumplin. The Underground Railroad. I wouldn't have read those books had I not been introduced to those on book two. They're three of my favorite books of life. Um, so, had those books not been introduced to me through book two, I probably wouldn't have read them. You know what I mean? So, it is important that, like, I was introduced to new books. But I've gotten to the point now where, and it's been, like, full circle for me. It really, really has. I'm so, and I always was, I just was so excited to be in the community. You know, like, I always just wanted to be part of something and never really felt like I was part of something. I mean, I feel like I'm part of a 12-step program, but, like, I never until being in a 12-step program felt like I really fit in anywhere, you know? And then I was part of something that they couldn't kick me out of, you know? But booktube felt like this really safe place that I could be part of and accepted and people were really nice but I also wanted to talk about things that other people were talking about I mean I didn't like you know when I started there were like four or five of us that kind of started around the same time and I remember there was another guy and he read a lot of like like kind of esoteric beatnik literature and then there was another guy that read a lot of classics and then there was like this girl, I don't even think she makes booktube videos anymore, and she's from the UK, and she was, maybe, I don't know, I haven't seen one of her videos in forever, if she does, and um, she was uh, like doing all of these very unheard of, uh, unheard to me books from the UK, then there was another guy that was from the UK, and his reading was like all over the place, I mean he was probably one of the most read people I've ever interacted with in my life and um, so intelligent so there was other like interests you know and now there's people that only read true crime only read science fiction only read mysteries only read that but a couple years ago that really wasn't the case when I started booktube it was literally people that I mean people that got any kind of views and that had people watching their videos which let's be honest we start channels because we want people to watch our videos well if you weren't talking about young adult, people weren't watching your videos. Like, that was just how it was. I mean, you weren't going to do a book on the... You weren't going to do a video on the Odyssey and get, you know, people to watch your video. But if you did a book... If you did a video on, like... I'm trying to think of a big, huge book that came out. Well, I remember when that book... This isn't a young adult book. When that Jojo Moyes book came out. Um, you and Me, or whatever it's called, about the guy that's... Um, I think he's a quadriplegic, and the I can't, Lou goes and stays with her, and she wears the bumblebee tights and all that kind of stuff. Do you know what I'm talking about? Me before you. Like, I remember when that book came out, that was a huge, huge deal. Well, that, and also because, like, five to ten of, like, the major booktubers got sponsorships, and so they were doing, like... They got, like, sponsorships to show, like, go to the movie when the movie was coming out. I think I think that's when it was getting really highly promoted was when the movie came out. Um, it just stopped. I think that's when it got highly promoted was when the movie came out. Um, and, you know, they were getting these huge PR boxes, and sp which was fine. I thought it was cool that, you know, like, I mean, I'd watched YouTube long enough to know that YouTubers were getting sponsorships and all that kind of stuff, but the fact that booktubers were getting sponsorships, I had no idea back then. None. I don't think I've ever done a book sponsorship. reached out to a lot more. I mean, I know people, this is the one thing I will say about you, about booktube though, is that I know people that like have like very active in bookstagrams and maybe not so many views on their, uh, booktube channel, right? Or vice versa, but they get sent stuff constantly from publishers. I mean, constantly, Like I don't think they've purchased a book in the last two years. 
So, I mean, it's a lucrative field. It's, uh, I mean, I think, like, next to, like, makeup, like, books are really making a return, and it's becoming a huge industry again, especially with, like, Audible and Kindle and things like that. You can upload, you can publish your own pieces. I mean, like, it's a huge, huge, huge uh, business at this point in a way that it wasn't, um, you know, years ago. People were really worried if... if you're my age or even a little bit younger, you'll remember this, that people were really worried there was going to be a day when there were no more physical books, that people just, that the Kindle took over and that people weren't really reading books and that all the bookstores, remember that Borders closed down and B. Dalton closed down and Walden Books closed down and they were like, we're not going to have any more physical bookstores. And I think in 2020, like Amazon is opening some bookstores is what I heard, I think. Um, but whenever I go into our Barnes & Noble Buyer House or I have our half-price books, they're packed. Half-price books is always packed. And Barnes & Noble is too. So I don't know how well they're doing. Um, I've never wondered how a store like Barnes & Noble could stay open selling books. But um, I mean, I think people really enjoy reading physical book cop or physical copy books now. I know, like, I love to have a physical copy. And I'll read on a Kindle, but I don't love it, you know? And then there's people like Tanya, my friend Tanya, like, she only reads on a Kindle. And she used to buy books all the time. She still does, if she, like, when she goes on vacation, because, like, to sit by the pool, she, like, like she enjoys having um, a paperback or a hardback because it can just get wet and she doesn't really care. And Um... So yeah, but I've like kind of come full circle with the reading thing from like 20, 30 years ago though to today, not just when I started on booktube. So it's not like I've come full circle from when I started booktube. Like when I started booktube, I was excited and I was like, you know, just really into it. I was just like, whatever, you know, but now, but my reading then, I was open to suggestions of anything at that time. I was like totally open to like, hey, what should I read and what would I like, you know? And I would watch all these videos and I would go buy all the books that everybody had, you know? But now, I've come full circle from where I was, I would say like, mm, 20, 25 years ago. When I literally, because you know, like my undergraduate degree is in, you know, English. So I read a lot of literature in college and but there was a point when I just was like, I don't care if I pick up one more book that I feel like I should read. I'm only going to read things I want to read. And, and just read for pure enjoyment, pure escape, pure fun. And I'm back there. Like, it took me 20 or 25 years to get to that point. Because people would talk about books, and I'd be like, oh, I feel like I should read that book. Like, that book is important. Like, I think that's going to, you know, like, I need to read that book, right? Um, I've always been somebody that has felt that way about certain books. And, and I still do, and I still will. I mean, there will still be books that I feel like um, I need to read or I want to read or whatever, you know. But now I'm back to just every book I go pick up is because... Um, I'm excited about reading it. Now, I don't know that I would could say that about, like, I'm so excited to drive around and listen to The Secret tonight, which is a self-help book. But The Celestine Prophecy is a self-help book that is built around this kind of, like, um, adventure that this guy goes on. And I don't remember a whole lot about it, so I'm, I'm ex I know how much I loved it, though, the first time that I read it, so I'm excited to reread it. Because this Denise Mina book is an adventure book like none other. It is so fantastic. I'm, like, reading all of these kind of, like, on the road adventure books right now and watching these shows. Like, I'm watching AJ and the Queen, which I'm loving, on RuPaul. RuPaul's Drag Race just got announced February 28th, I think, is when it comes out. I don't know anybody on the cast. Did I say this last night? I feel like this is a repeat. I said this last night. I think I said it last night. So, anyway, um, I'm excited about that. And then I'm watching AJ and the Queen. I feel like I'm watching something else, too, right now. But, I don't know, maybe not. But you know what is so weird? Like, Alex sits down on the TV and he will watch, like, six hours of TV back-to-back -back of all the shows that he, like, DVRs and stuff like that. I am so insistent on not getting rid of cable 
like whenever he brings it up, he's like, we should just get rid of cable. It's a waste of money and we have Hulu and we have all this stuff, right? I'm like, no, we cannot get rid of cable. I'm always the one that is so resistant to it. And you know, I was sitting here thinking about this today. I don't think I have turned on the TV I bet it's been a week. I bet it's been over a week. I haven't sat down. I, I maybe, like, for a little bit, watched, like, I think the night that Sarah came over, and they were, wa uh, but they weren't even watching a show that night. Something that Alex was watching on TV, I sat there and watched with him while I was eating. But that was, like, the last time. But as far as me, like, going over and turning on the TV, like, I watch all of my shows, like, on my phone. Which is kind of why I'm thinking about really wanting to get, like, a Kindle Fire. But as far as me going over and, like, turning on the TV, um, yeah, like, I haven't done that in forever. And you know what's so weird? It's, like, for the longest time, like, September and October in the fall... I would, while I was uploading my videos, so like, you know, I would get a lot of my videos done and they were like uploading and whatever. And so then when I was doing that, feeding the dogs, taking the dogs outside, you know, giving PP his medicine, all that kind of stuff, I would go through and I would find like some horror movie, some scary movie to watch. And so I would start um, like watching that. And I would put on like a scary movie every single day. I don't know, and I think like that's kind of where I feel like I'm grieving in a way that I don't even realize I'm grieving, if that makes sense. Because it's like, I just kind of find myself going like, kind of just going through the motions a little bit. And I think I'm more sad than I really think that I am or something. I don't know, I don't know. Like if you ask me on the spot, like I would say to you, like other than like this kind of little breakdown that I had today, but there was a reason why that happened. But something reminded me of PP like really hardcore today. But um, like if you just stopped me throughout my day and you said like, like are you really sad right now? Are you doing okay? I would say no, like I feel, I feel okay. But then, I don't know, I don't know. But then, like, later looking back, I'm like, but are you? I don't know. But, you know, back then, I would always turn on movies and, you know, have candle waxes. I haven't had any candle waxes really going. Um, tonight, I replaced the Bath & Body Works, uh plug-in things, wallflowers. Oh my God. So the, they have, we have one downstairs that I bought and we have another one upstairs. And um, they go kind of quick though. I will say that. So I replaced the one downstairs and it's called cinnamon something. I couldn't really tell what they were. I had like champagne toast for both of them and Alex does, he likes the candle, but he does not want that smell in the bedroom. He said it smells like, he's like, oh, this reminds me of my grandma. I don't want this. I'm gonna like flat. He's like powdery grandma stuff. I don't want this. I said, okay. So it, when it was dead, like it was gone, like it had, was empty. It had been sitting in there empty for a while. So I replaced it. I had this other realization today too. Um, this kind of goes along with this a little bit. But, um, so I replaced both of them upstairs and like one in the bedroom and one downstairs I had behind this table next to the couch. And that one I replaced with something called like cinnamon clove. And I couldn't really smell that one that much yet. But upstairs I put one in that was called holiday and it literally smelled like cinnamon sticks. It was so fantastic. I woke up cause I took a nap tonight while Alex was gone and I woke up. And I was like, oh my God, it smells so fantastic in this house. I just like could not get over how good it smelled. Um, you know, I had this realization today. This is kind of like this strange realization, right? That like, I was standing in the kitchen and then like this was when I was also like changing the plug-in. You know, I like constantly am wanting to redo the house, you know, like, and, and I, in my head, I think I see it being very sterile. Like, gray, I wanna get the, I don't mind our floor. We 
picked it out not too long ago, it feels like, but um, I kind of like to get those gray, like, barn door floors, you know, and then, like, grayish muted walls, and then, like, some, like, you know, gray couch with, like, white piping on it or something, like, big L-shaped couch, big TV that we can watch, just very sterile, I think is how I see things, and I'm not really sure why that is desirable to me. I think it's because, like, when I watch these TV shows, you know, like, whatever it is, like, Real Housewives or, you know, like, whatever TV show I'm watching with Alex, these reality shows, it's like they, people always live in these very carol, kind of s sterile environments, right? Like, these homes that have and I'm attracted to those homes, you know, the homes that have, like, the barn garage doors and the white crown molding on the outside, and it's the white and blue, and they look like Cape Cods, and they're real adorable. Like, those are real popular here in Indianapolis. Like, I love that, right? Like, the neighborhoods that are building up those. And you go inside, and it's, like, beautiful granite countertops and, like, the really modern, like, kitchen lighting, and everything is real sterile and clean, and, like, you know, the stainless steel, fi uh, stainless steel, uh, what do you call it? you know, refrigerator and all of that. Like, I love all that, okay? Because I think it makes me feel like I go into a hotel and everything is clean. Like, I like that. But today, for some reason, I was like... I was looking at the thing that we have at the front door. Like, when you come in, it's what we have this table and then we have this huge mirror on it. That was my mom's. And... Like, that's where we put our keys and Alex puts his wallet and stuff like that. So, well, he has two wallets. He's like a wallet that he, like, a little small wallet that he takes with him that has, like, his stuff in it that he needs. And then that's, like, a wallet that has, like, stuff that he doesn't need, like his Costco card and stuff like that. But anyway, so we just put our stuff there. Well, Alex moved a lot of, like, the fan art that people had sent. I don't know what else to call it, so that's just what I'm going to call it. But the art of PP that people had sent us. He, there's two pictures there now in front of the, the mirror. And then our friends, the couples that we went to, the couple that we went to dinner with, they gave us a plant um, for PP's passing. And so he has that right there, too. And we have it with a bunch of candles. And then, like, I stopped, and I looked over at the mantle, and I have this, like, neon-looking picture, blue and yellow and green, that somebody did of me that I absolutely love. And then somebody sent us this picture of Pee, Pee that I've had behind me, like, when I'm recording, but, like, I had to move it because it would autofocus on that. I've had it for probably two years. I love that picture. It's probably my favorite. It's like a painting. And so that's up on the, the thing. And I'm looking at all my books in the bookshelf, and I'm thinking to myself, and all the stuff that we have in the mantle and whatever, you know, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, I like that our place is real eclectic. Like, I like that we have a lot of these little knickknacks and stuff. Now, three weeks from now, I may say, I'm tired of all these knickknacks. I want to throw them away. I'm allowed to have, change my opinion, <laughs> depending on my mood, you know? But... I like that stuff. Like, that's really who we are. You know, we really, at the end of the day, are big, comfy bed with, you know, big, comfy bedding and a crazy closet. And I don't know. Like, do we need some things upgraded? Sure. Like, we need our bathroom upgraded. We need our kitchen upgraded. Like, those things. But those are, like... That's not what I'm talking about. Do, do I want to have new flooring? Absolutely. Do I want to get a new couch and new, like, area, like, sitting area and change it all around? Yes. And maybe get rid of some of the things and take all of the pictures that we have on the tables and put them up on a wall of all of our friends and family because we've been wanting to do that forever with, like, black and white, you know, um, or black frames. But do I want to get rid of all the stuff that... I feel like when you walk in, speaks of who we are. No, I don't think I do. And I think I really had this kind of like awakening today when I was standing there. I was like, I love this place. Like, this is our home, you know? And, um, that doesn't mean that I don't want to change some things about it. But that kind of eclectic, you know, thing I want to change and whatever. Like, somebody made a comment. And I know that they didn't mean anything about it, but I think it was on my vlog. I know they didn't mean anything about it. I didn't really take offense to it. But they said something about, like, 
getting rid of the outdated art in our house. Like, every picture that is in our house has meaning to me. Like, it's not just, except for this picture that I got at Target that's in the bathroom. Every picture that I have in my house, every, if you see anything framed in our house, there is meaning to me. You know, the, the crooked picture in the kitchen, like when I'm vlogging, that's a JT, that's a JT Johnson picture. My mom and my aunt collected those. Um, she was a local artist and she would write on, she would paint and write on poems on things like, uh, garbage bags and not garbage bags, like, uh, grocery bags and just all kinds of things. And then she would frame them and she lived downtown by the art school and I love her paintings. My aunt had a bunch. We have, I think my cousin gave me like eight of my aunts and my mom has like three or four in the house. You know, I have my mom and dad lived in Chicago in the late sixties, early seventies. I have tons of artwork from local artists in Chicago because my parents always believed and my mom did until she passed away in believing or in, um, buying local artists. So I know to other people that it just looks like prints or whatever, but to me, those are memories. Like when I look at this one picture of like this guy and this, his kid eating an ice cream cone walking down the street in Chicago underneath the path, like the underpass in Wrigleyville, like we had that like on our porch and it like hung on this white brick wall. Um, the Paul Clay, you know, print that we have in our kitchen is not my favorite in the entire world. But, like, we had that when we were, like, in my mom's kitchen, you know? These J.T. Johnson paintings hung in, like, my mom's bedroom and, like, her bathrooms and things like that. So, those things have meaning to me. And, and in all reality, there's a lot of things in my mother's that I have thrown away and that I would be quick to throw away. But the artwork is probably not one of them. I mean, it just really isn't. <clears throat> We've done a lot of things our dated. Like, my mom had <clears throat> one, two, I don't know, three, one in the bathroom, three in the bathroom, two in the bathroom, so that's four, five, six, seven. She had seven, oh, in the kitchen, two, eight, and then a runner in the hallway, nine. She had nine authentic oriental rugs in um, her house. And she had, like, given half of them away when she moved out of that, or she had them in their condo. I mean, the place was just, it was, that was all it was, was over this carpet that was nasty. So, when Alex and I moved in there, like, the first thing he said was, I don't, when we got the, oh, when we got the wood flooring, he said, I don't like the Oriental rugs anymore. Well, I had grown up with Oriental rugs. My parents, like, would go to auctions for Oriental rugs. I mean, they're very expensive Oriental rugs. My dad and my mom loved it. They researched it. They were really, really into it, right? They're rolled up in our basement. My dad came, and he took, like, four of them, and he was, like, the other ones, he was, like, are damaged, so they're not really worth anything. They're, they're not. And Alex said, and he actually made a good point. He was like, well, let's get them cleaned, which is super expensive to do. It's a couple hundred dollars to do. He was like, but when we get a place in Florida, you know, because they're like kind of darkish colors, but they're pretty. They're really pretty. He said, you know, if for some of our areas, it might look great. Like, you know, if we have like wood walls or white walls and white flooring, you know, to then have this dark rug with like a dark, uh, table, like dining room table. Like that's the other thing, the dining room table. Like, you know, my cousin said, get rid of that dining room table. I said, Caroline, that dining room table sits like 12 or 15 people. I have the inserts in the basement. I mean, it's a huge dining room table. And I've always kind of dreamed of like when we had a condo somewhere, having that all like all pulled out, not just for one, two, three, four, five, six chairs, but 12 or 15 chairs, you know, having it all the way out. I think that would be really cool. It must be 12. It must be half the size. So I know, but you know, like, I know, like, people are like, oh, remod you know, remodernize. Our friends and family tell us the same thing all the time. And I think Alex would come in and probably, I don't know, like, I, I used to think that, that he would have a lot of it gutted. But sometimes when I'll say, like, let's change this, he'll be like, I don't want to change that. Like, I really like that. And it'll be something that was, you know, a leftovers of my mom's or whatever. Um, like, I had at one point said, let's paint the fireplace white and really, like, and get gray flooring and modernize this place. And he was like, I don't want to paint the fireplace white. Because I think our neighbor, Laura, her fireplace, which is totally different than ours, it's brick. But she has it painted white and really brightens up the house. And he was like, I don't, he was like, I love our fireplace. I don't want to paint that all white. He was like, that takes away from all that. So, 
I think it's just, you know, I don't know. It's getting rid of the clutter. That is the thing. Getting rid of the clutter and enjoying the kind of eclectic feel of the things that we have in there, the things that we love and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I can't believe I've almost, it's at 21 minutes and 26 seconds. I can't believe I almost filmed, a, filmed another, uh, my second part of this is already over. So what did I do today? So what did I do today? Oh, I got up and I had this sobriety thing this morning. Okay, I, not this morning, late morning. It was like at 12. Well, I had to leave at 11. So, I was, <coughs> I had to leave at 11, but I left at 11.30, but I got there right on time. That was so weird. There was just like this random road that goes out in the middle of nowhere, and I know it does because I drive by here all the time during the day. And at the end of the road was a pink flamingo into the ground, stuck into the ground. Like, not alive, but like stuck into the ground. So, I went to bed late last night. What was I doing that I listened to? I went to bed late last night. <coughs> well, I listened to some of my audiobook, but I feel like I came home and I, oh, I did. I came home and I watched an episode of AJ and the Queen and then I just couldn't, I'm having a hard time falling asleep. So anyway, um, was that last night? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I got up today and I was exhausted when I got up. I was so tired. I was like, oh my God, I can hardly get through today. And I had to go to this thing. And I had to be there like right at 12. So, um, the sobriety thing. So I got the dogs outside and um, I was getting my hair cut today. Oh, I got my hair cut today. Hello. And so I had to stop and get her tip at the bank. And I got all this stuff done. I don't even know how I got it all done, but I did. And um, so I got that done, ate my kind of pseudo lunch, and then um, like on the way, and then got to, what do you call it? Um, Cause I was really hungry when I woke up today. And then got to the sobriety thing like right at noon, which was good. I knew the end was coming and I didn't even look. I just kind of for a second had forgotten, I guess. But anyway, um, so yeah, got the thing at noon, did that. And then I was there and then I went and got my hair cut right after that. And um, it, it was like perfect timing. Like it ended and then like I just went and got my hair cut. It was like perfect timing because I was worried. I was like, if this goes over, like I'm going to be screwed getting to my hair appointment. But I wasn't. And I had, oh, I was early too. So um, to my hair appointment, I was like 10 or 15, 10 minutes early, probably 10 minutes early. 15 might be pushing it, but I would like to say I was 15 minutes early. So anyway, um, so I stopped at Starbucks on the way and I got coffee and then I went and got my hair cut. And then after that, I talked to Tanya and Tanya and Eric had just gone and seen a movie. Mercy, I think they said. She said she really had a hard time watching it, that it really made her sad. But she said it was really fantastically done. Um, she said it was just so sad. Um, they don't really go to movies during the middle of the day, which I thought was kind of interesting. But anyway, um, and then she had to work in the afternoon. And then she wanted to know if I wanted to go to a candlelight meeting with um, she and my sponsor tonight. And so I was like, well, let me see what I want to get done, blah, 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 whatever. And so I was trying to, like, I had all these videos I wanted to make. I was like, okay, I have been really lax on filming videos this week. Like, I had a video, I had a video for every channel that I wanted to film and make, right? So I was wide awake at that point. Like, I don't know what happened, but I got my second win. I felt fantastic. I felt so good. I was like, I got all, I got to get this stuff done, blah, blah, blah. At that point, it was like four o'clock, five o'clock. It was like between four and five. And I was like, I knew Alex was going to this dinner, right? And so I was like, well, I'm gonna film from like five to seven and then get my videos up. And I knew that they would be up late, but I was like, it is what it is. It's okay, right? So Alex comes home and he's real upset when he walks in the door and he's like, so I'm sitting there talking to him and I'm like, um, 
so we kind of have this, we, we have this discussion. And it was just about like how we were gonna handle that when the other person's emotional. So anyway, so he came in and then um, he was helping me feed the dogs. And then he wanted to move his car because he was just gonna take an Uber. And I was like, okay. And he was like, cause I'm, you know, I, it is what it is. And if I wanna go have a couple of, you know, glasses of wine, I don't want to like, you know, I'm gonna take an Uber. So I said, okay. So he goes and he moves my car because my car was in the driveway. And so then he put his car in the garage and then um, put my car back out in the driveway. And I was like, okay. So, we're sitting there. I had just, I was getting ready to upload the video. I made one video today. I had that in my vlog and they were both done. And so I was kind of doing stuff at the computer and he like came in and he was like, do you know where my phone is? And I go, no. And he said, well, oh, he, no, 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 no. He went upstairs and he like changed his shirt and he like came downstairs and he had this leather jacket and he was putting this leather jacket on and he was like, have you seen my phone? And I was like, no, why? And he was like, well, I need to call his friend. And he's like, I need to tell her that I'm on my way, but I also need to order my Uber. And I was like, well, I said, no, I, I said, do you want me to call? He goes, can you call my phone? And I said, yeah, so I called his phone. Couldn't hear it in the house anywhere because he had his ringer off, but you could still, you know, kind of sometimes, our house is small. You can hear like the buzzer and whatever. Okay, I mean to tell you, we looked everywhere. We had the flashlights out. We were looking in the backyard. We were looking in the front yard. We, I, we looked in and out of my car. We looked in and out of his car. We looked everywhere. I mean, we looked through everything. An hour of looking for this phone. He had locate my phone up on his computer. The phone was at the house. We could see it at the house. I'm like, this is so completely crazy. Like, what is going on here, right? So, he takes the computer outside with him. Like, he's trying to locate. I don't know. But anyway, so, he finally, like, I follow him outside. And he's like, I think it's in your car. Because he could, oh, because it was sending this ping, this ping sound. And he's like, it's sending this ping sound. And he goes, it's, they say it, they, he, it says it keeps on sending it. And, but we couldn't hear it anywhere in the house. So we get outside and he's like, I hear it. And I was like, okay. And I could too. And it was like, ping, ping, something like that. And I was like, yeah, I kind of hear it too. <coughs> he goes, it's coming from your car. And I go, Alex, it's not coming from my car. I looked inside my car, I looked everywhere in my car. So he gets in my car. It's all the way down between my seats and underneath the uh, and underneath the seat, like lodged underneath there. How? Because <laughs> he probably had it in his back pocket, and when he got out, it fell down there and then went right underneath there. An hour. So by that point, he was late going to his dinner, and um, I just was. To be honest with you, I was just was kind of like, yeah, I'm over it now. Like, I wanted to. I was at least gonna get up a Peterisms video. And I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm over right now. I'm not doing this anymore. So I put the ring lights up and hung out with the dogs and then I did a bunch of stuff. I can't remember what else I did. I called, who did I, oh, I called a friend of mine and talked to them on the phone for a while. And then Alex texted me and was like, got down here safely. And um, which you should always have your friends and loved ones do when they take an Uber, just saying, um, or a Lyft. Um, and so then he was texting me about where they decided to go for dinner because they were going to go to this Baz Buzz Pizza down. We usually go to the one on the north side, but they were going to go to the one downtown, but they, it was too far of a, a walk from where she lives. So they didn't want to Uber, so they went to this Thai place. And yeah, and then I was like, well, I think I'm going to lay down for a while. So I took the dogs upstairs and we laid down. And we got all cozy into bed and... Um, When I would take naps back in the day, PB would be my, um, like he would come over and he would like turn on his side or on his back and he would let me like hold him while we would sleep, you know? My little cuddler. Boo Radley, 
he's lovable. Like, he likes to be picked up. He likes to be carried around, all that, doted on, that kind of stuff. But he's not much of a cuddler, like, when you're in bed. Like, you can put your arm around him, but he won't just, like, come over to you, like, wanting to be cuddled. Like, he likes to lay where he is. Like, if he, like, it's almost weird. Like, I think he kind of, like, knows, um, like, if you need him or something, it's real weird. But Tucker has been the one that I've been, like, holding on to while I'm sleeping and taking naps because he lets me in. He's so, you know, he's just real furry anyway, and he's just, you know, like, so cute to hold on to and stuff. So, Tucker and I have been sleeping together, and, but today during the nap, like, Boo Radley usually, like, sits on Alex's pillow, like, when I take a nap. So, I was holding Tucker for a little bit, and then Tucker got up, and he, like, moved, and Boo Radley came over, and I was, like, kind of, like, laying on my side, and Boo Radley came, and he just, like, totally, like, circled right here and laid and, like, pushed himself back into me like he wanted me to hold him. It was the sweetest thing in the entire world, and I was like, oh. I think, and I really think Tucker's having a hard time with people being gone. Like, he just walks around all day like he doesn't know, like, what he's supposed to do or anything. I just feel bad for the little guy. But anyway, then I got up from my nap, and, um, Alex said he was on his way home. He had texted me, he had texted, like, he, I woke up, and he, like, was walking through the door. Because the dog started going crazy, like, a minute afterwards. And, um... Then Tanya, I texted her to see how the meeting was because she went to a candlelight meeting. I didn't go. I got. I was just like, I'm too tired. I've been up all day today. <laughs> I wanted to go really bad, but I was just too tired. So she said the meeting was great, and um, that was it. And then I was like, okay. And then I laid there with Alex um, in bed for a while, and he was showing me stuff about TikTok. He was showing me like people that he follows and people that he likes. I don't really know like who to follow. I, like, followed this guy that I know from YouTube because he was helping me today a lot. Um, and then I followed somebody that Alex told me. I think I followed... I don't know who else I followed. I followed this guy that I used to watch on Vine back in the day because he's hilarious. His name's Zachary something. But I used to follow him on Vine. Apparently, like, the new Vine came out today. Vine 2 is called Bite or something like that. I can't keep up with all of it. I just really can't. But. And I have to say, like, so many of the TikToks that, like, get hundreds and thousands of views on them, I don't find any, like, I don't think they're funny or interesting whatsoever. Like, I really don't understand it. Like, when people think they're so funny, I don't get it. But, anyway... People love him. My husband sits there in bed. And he just watches those for just rolls and rolls and just watches them forever. I do like the food ones, which is so funny. I don't know why I like the food ones because I like to eat. But, like, I actually searched food and saw all these things. And there's a bunch of, like, fast food hacks on there that you, like, things that they'll tell you, like, you can get. What was, like, one of them that I saw? Like, if you go to Chick-fil-A, it's a lot about Chick-fil-A. Like, if you go to Chick-fil-A and you ask for something... If you ask, if you ask, if you say something before they ask you, they have to give you a free ice cream sandwich, like two cookies and ice cream in the middle. And then the other one, I almost kind of feel like they're fake though. Like they're, these kids are making them up and then people are going to go in there and try it and it's not going to happen. And then there was one about Subway and it was like, the meat is free, but or the, the meat is not free, but the veggies are free. And but if you ask for it to be toasted before they ask you if you want it to they want it toasted, they have to give you three cookies or something. Have you guys ever heard of this before? I have never heard of this before. Something like that. Like if you I don't know. It's like all these like hacks like that. But what's interesting to me is that I did this um Oh, the way that I got started watching these was there was this Chick-fil-A that if you wanted, like, extra macaroni and cheese and your macaroni and cheese, that you just go through there and you ask for bacon macaroni and cheese, and then they put more macaroni and cheese in there because of the bacon or something. I don't know what it was, but it was something like that. And it reminded me of the girl that did the mac and cheese, um 
thing at Panera and she got fired for it because she showed that they're not actually like it's frozen they just put it like you know in a bowl of or boiling water that it was not like they were actually coming up with it on their own at the, each restaurant which I think people knew anyway but anyway so I'm like do these people not think do these kids not think they're going to get fired for showing like hacks of that you're not supposed to tell people at these fast food restaurants I don't know I just thought it was interesting that they were like so openly having their faces on these things showing these hacks and then there's a Starbucks girl I followed she does like recipes of all these different drinks and I really liked her videos her TikToks I'll probably grow bored of, bored of it in a day or two but I hope not so anyway, what do you guys have planned for this weekend? Do you have exciting plans? We do not. Alex has, um, well, he has an engagement party tomorrow that he's, it's, it's like an engage, it's like, okay. His friend is getting engaged. She doesn't know it yet. Her fian her boyfriend slash it's gonna be her fiance tomorrow is proposing to her. Her whole family's coming in. He asked Alex and like three of her friends, her closest friends, to help put the party together and be there. Cause it's like they're doing this very exaggerated kind of like party thing. So that's tomorrow. He has to be up at 10 and at the place because this guy couldn't decorate it. So that's why you ask Alex and these three girls. So they're like decorating the place and all that kind of stuff. Um, so then, that's tomorrow during the day, and then he didn't know what he was doing tomorrow night, so he didn't have any plans tomorrow night, and we don't have any plans tomorrow night, and then Sunday, brunch, followed by, um, my nephew's birthday party, which that'll be fun to see all the family and stuff. And then we'll probably come home and take a nap after that. And I may make videos on Sunday. I may just watch TV and listen to audiobooks and do all that kind of stuff on Sunday. We'll have to see. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. So those are my plans for the weekend. My plans for right now are going to be that I'm going to finish reading Conviction by Denise Mina. That will be my fourth book that I have read for January. And then I'm going to read the listen to the Celestine Prophecy. Um, I'm hoping to get between five and seven books done for January. I still have a week left. Not even now. Is it a week from tomorrow or is it a week from today? I think it's a week from today, maybe. Um, so I'm going to have to powerhouse through some of these books if I want to, you know. I have to read a couple at home and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> But I'm going to try to get that done. And then um, my goal was to read eight books a month. If I read eight books a month, that would be close to 100 books a year. And that was my goal. So I, the thing is, whether I read four this month or I read six or seven or nine, I just don't want to get behind. I just don't want it to be like one for January, one for February, or one for March. Because then that's like 20 books. I do want to make a really strong effort to hit 100 books this year. Like, that's... I just want to hit it once. Like, that's my goal. You know, just once I want to hit 100 books. So, I'm going to try to do my best um, to stay on course with all of that. But... Anyway, all right, I think I'm going to get off here now so that I can um, go listen to my audiobook. I love that somebody, I can't remember who put this in here in the comment sections below. But anyway, they put like my ending, like how I do my ending. I think it was Adriana Girl Girlita. Um, so, hey, Adriana. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm going to get off here now. So, anyway. Um, I love you guys, and I hope you're having an amazing Saturday, unless you have other plans. But like I always say, do not have other plans. Make the most of your day. Do something fabulous today. Do something fantastic. Do something exciting, or just relax. Or do something today that will make a profound change in your life five, ten years down the road, two weeks down the road. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Make sure that you look at yourself in the mirror every single day, and you say, I love you. You are valuable. You are important. You matter. I'm like thinking of that list that they wrote, she wrote in my head. Um, 
and today is gonna to be an amazing day in 2020. This year is going to be the best year of your life. I believe that too, it's gonna to be the best year of our lives. And uh, most importantly, make sure that you remember to let somebody else in your life know how much they mean to you or, or just do a random act of kindness. We can just do randomly kind things, you know, and not have to tell other people that we did them, you know? Buy somebody's coffee, let somebody have a parking space, whatever, it could be anything. Give somebody a compliment, just cheer somebody up. Yep, I think that's it. Anyway, I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!